book of Revelation. So we are going to pick up from where we left off. We have already done Revelation chapter 7. I have a lot of these things on YouTube. So those of you who have I've, I've done a lot of um, what I'm doing now. I'm looking at the text of the book of Revelation. So, though I am not looking at verse by verse per se, I am doing a lot more uh, uh, that you may consider. Uh, we're looking at it from uh, uh, a lot of things that has been said uh, as uh, regarding the visions of uh, John the Revelator. So today we are going to pick up from what we left off. I believe we le we, we left off uh, part of. Uh, let me reposition my this thing here. Um, in Revelation chapter seven, we're talking about the visions of John the Revelator. Heavenly Father, we thank you one more time. We exalt your name, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Oh, I don't deserve your presence. But you make me to be in your presence. Because in my old self, I have no, no relationship. I have no right in my own abilities to be in your presence. Uh, you have made it possible uh, by providing uh, your only begotten son's blood uh, to bring this reconciliatory process to make it possible to bring um, the, bring bring me to your presence. Uh, therefore, as I find myself in your presence this moment, O oh Lord, I pray that you speak through me. Uh, use my vocal cord. Speak through every fiber of my being today to each and every. Every individual, oh Father, that is at the listening pleasure of your word through me today. Father, oh may I, may you say something through me today that will meet uh, every individual's meet at the uh, uh, at the point of their need today in the in, in 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 wherever they are living. Oh Father, oh Lord, I pray this moment and hold the atmospheric realm in check in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ in the atmospheric realm this moment. The enemy and his cold hearts have no power. They have no influence and any impact upon your people, O oh Lord. What voice they may be hearing this moment forth, O oh Lord, will be the voice of the Holy Ghost through me this hour, O oh Lord. They will hear no voice but the voice of the Holy Ghost through this vessel that you are using for your own glory. Oh, give each and every individual a heart of receptivity oh, to receive your word and a mind to comprehend. Help me with clarity of speech today, O oh Father, and speak eloquently through me. This I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' much listening. Somebody say amen, amen. and Amen. Yes, feel free to respond to whatever I say. We are recording, but that is so good. Well, um, last we had spoken about the 40, 44,000 uh, 44, Jews that were selected. We talked about the fact that these people are those who come out of the great tribulation. These people are, and, and no, yeah, these people are not. Oh, no, we talk about those who came out of the great tribulation, the Gentiles. And then we added the 44,000 of the Jewish. So we I made it clear that those who came out of the tribulation cannot be confused with those who are identified. Uh, with the 44,000, because the 44,000 Jewish are the 12 tribes of Israel, as we know it. So we are also made it clear here that um, uh, this has clarified uh, 
those who teach the book of Revelation that um, every believer here is going to go through the tribulation that a book of Revelation describes. Uh, these, these 44 and a lot of these things refute that. And again, you, you, have, you have every right to hold on to whether you believe in the post-trip, mid-trip, or pre-trip. You have every right to hold on to whatever you believe in. I believe strongly, strongly that I am of the school of thought for pre-trip. I believe that. I don't, I don't see how God will allow me to go through this horror, which is ahead of us the seven years, the three and a half, two, the two, three and a half years. I don't see how he allowed, he's going to allow any child of God, any true child of God, anybody who has embraced uh, the, the finished work of the cross, anybody who has espoused the Christ Jesus, the one who died and rose again and ascended on high. I don't see it in scripture how God will let those out here to go through this part. So I am of the school of thought for the pre-trip. So again, you are free to uh, either believe the pre-trip, mid-trip or post-trip. That is something that all of us debate, but I don't see myself in that aspect. Anyway, none of us, We'll be losing anything anyway, whether you believe in the pre-trip, mid-trip, or the post-trip. I believe one thing that those of all of us must hold dear unto is that we we'll all profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We all have the fundamentals. We believe that he was, he, he, you know, the, 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 the annunciation, which was the virgin conception, through Mary, we believe that he was born. We believe that he was crucified. We believe that he died, buried, resurrected, and ascended on high. If you have that uh, uh, doctrine, then you have nothing to fear. <laughs> you know whether you believe pre-trip, mid-trip, or post-trip, you, you have nothing to fear. Just that we, we may have a slightly uh, doctrinal uh, uh, mis. Uh, 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 Disagreement. That's all it is. Right. As long as we have the fundamentals down, hallelujah, we are still brothers and sisters in the Lord. And so uh, you don't have to be alarmed by any of this, okay? Uh, just that I, I, I don't see myself only through that. So in Revelation chapter 8, vision 3, this, this is a vision of the seven angels. Uh, and we see that in Revelation chapter 8, verses 2, uh, all the way through Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. Here, we're going to be talking about the seven, seven trumpets. The seven trumpet judgment revelation, again, is the seven trumpet judgment revelation. Here, the seventh seal was opened according to Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. Now, the first four trumpets judgment, we see that in Revelation chapter 8, verse 2 through 13. So if I may indulge um, Deaconess, um, I have a little bit here to, to read uh, uh, Revelation. Um, if you have the New Kingdom's translation uh, for the purpose of those who are not familiar with the old uh, kingdom's version. And I, I was thinking about this the other day. Let me interject here, a pivot a little bit here, of how a lot of folks today do not understand uh, enigma or, or, or say uh, metaphor or problem. <laughs> Okay, it's difficult sometimes. Yeah, folks, use, uh, even I, I see some folks, unfortunately, in the media, you, you, you use a little proverb, you throw them, I'm like, no, use your brain a little bit. Anyway, so a lot of folks don't have that understanding. So uh, read the New King James for us. I want you to read Revelation chapter 8. Read uh, verses 1, let me see here, uh, 2 through 13. Then I'll do a little. Uh, 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 yeah, just go on ahead. Okay, all right. 
seven seal, prelude to the seven trumpets. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who, start, who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood and they were, and they were thrown to the earth. And third of the trees were burned up and all green grass was burned up. Then the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that so that third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked. And I heard an angel flying through the midst of the seven of the he of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, "Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound." Amen. 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 And we see here that uh, a lot of woes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, as we saw in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 8, uh, as you were reading, something that stood out to me in that, that I, I, I did not elaborate here I, in my note here is that prayer, 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 sense of incense, prayer, sense of incense, prayer. See how important that thing is <laughs> called prayer. <laughs> very important. Very, very important. Because as you were reading, I just said, wow. Uh, let me, let me, before I go into my note, it's, it's, it's just that, again, those of you on YouTube um, watching us, um, only looking at the text itself, I am not doing line for line, anything of that just giving us a general understanding into the book of Revelation. And um, I, would, I wanna encourage you guys watching. I have uh, uh, the beginning of the Revelation. I have, there's a very good info, uh, informative, um, um, uh, informative uh, uh, video out there for you to go watch and, and, and learn something out of, because as we go into the book of Revelation, we all learn, together again i i was i was struck by how many times i see here when he opened the seven seal there was silence i'm gonna go into that that's um uh, well the silence it was an indication of say a pause and uh, our song or oh, is that a word i'm looking for of what is the come next that silence there in, is an indication of whoa. You know, you, you and I know that in heaven, as we read in the Bible, um, heavens, as we saw, is full of praises all the time, right? 
So for silence, that silence, 30 minutes silence, will be like eternity. Even as a preacher, when I'm preaching and I pause, could you imagine if I pause for five minutes as I'm teaching? It should be like eternity, right? So that is a long time pause, okay? So it's like, whoa, what is going to happen? So that, but anyway, it, it, here, I see here, so as they stand, they were given uh, uh, a golden censer, which we also saw uh, in the Old Testament. No wonder when it says, tell uh, uh, Moses, these are all, what you saw in heaven, do here, right? So I see here, uh, uh, so he was given much incense and that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Then another one is saying, and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's head. That is how much prayer is important in heaven. Mm. Mm -hmm. The three series, as we saw, of judgment, the seals, the trumpets, and the vials start at the different times we saw it. But they probably end at the close of the tribulation. In other words, they overlap. The seals start near the beginning of the tribulation. The trumpets start about one fourth of the way through the tribulation. The vials start in the last half of the tribulation period. Some students you know, of Revelation think that the seventh seal contains all of the trumpets. I believe I mentioned this last time too. And the seventh trumpet contains all of the vials. But no, chapter eight again resumes the seal judgment and has the opening of the seventh seal. That's one, as we saw at the beginning of the seventh seal, there is silence in heaven for about half an hour. The significance of the silence is that the event following the opening of this seal are going to be far more terrible mm -hmm. and awesome than any that has gone before. And so the silence there, uh, that is significance of that silence. This is why even in your translation, I believe you, 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 you mentioned at the time the interlope, you mentioned something, yeah, that's a pause. You know, and so that is the significance of that. So John's third vision that begins in verse two, when he sees the seven angels that stand continuously before the throne, receive the seven trumpets. The seven angels before the throne are each given, as we saw in scripture, a trumpet. Each angel will blow his trumpet in succession. The trumpet judgments are recorded again in chapter 8, verse 2 through 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 20. It is through there. And then verses uh, 3 and 5, look, we, 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 we look into heaven and remind us of the altar of sacrifice and the golden star of incense in the tabernacle, which are but shadows of these things. So at the beginning of the first trumpet, a series of judgment begin upon the earth, which resemble the plagues that God sent upon Egypt through Moses. Mm -hmm. So when you read, you go to Exodus chapter 9, verse 22, follow when you see that hail and fire mixed with blood, these are cast upon the earth. I don't think I'm going to be here. I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. 
I, I don't think so. At the, at the blowing of the second trumpet, a great catastrophe comes to the sea. Something as or like a huge mountain is cast into it. The word as the indicates that this is a figure of speech. And we do not know exactly what it is that is cast into the sea. Because they say something like mountain, something like it. So we do not know exactly what it is. So that's when you say something else, you know, something like it. So we do not know exactly, but some, so this, this is a figure of speech. And anybody that want to tell you, again, we, I said this before, the Bible is so deep and vast that what we can comprehend is only on the surface. Anything we add, it's from speculative perspective. Yeah, we may interject here, here and there, but what the Bible says, the Bible is so it is simple, but so profound in a way. So here we don't know exactly. So the word as again it indicates is an indication that this is the figure of speech. Now, somebody may come and tell you this is what it is, but again, <laughs> the scriptures, you see what I'm saying? The scripture is silence, you know, of what is silence of, you know. So again, we can only speculate. Okay, at the blowing of the dead trumpet, a great burning star falls from heaven into the rivers and springs, right? The fourth trumpet sounds and the sun, the moon and the stars are darkened. The Bible said the third of that. So that's a lot. Mm -hmm. of, can, you, can you imagine when it said the third of the globe is dark? Yeah, just think about it. <laughs> okay. We don't know. The, the Bible didn't give us which hemisphere was dark. <laughs> that is one thing, too. It didn't give us. It didn't tell us whether the, the, the north, the south, and the east, or the south, the east, and the west. It didn't give us that. So we don't know. Don't you, know. you got my point? Uh huh. Right. So we don't know which aspect. We don't know whether the north, the, the, north America, the continent, say the North America, South America, Central America. We don't know. We don't know. It was, it was silence. He didn't give us. You see what I'm saying? He didn't give us. Say, the third of the earth was darkened mm -hmm. when that thing, when 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 the, the trumpet was blown and the stars fall from heaven into the rivers and springs. So we don't know whether it is the north, whether it is the south, southeast, it is the east, south. What we don't know. <laughs> so if I come to you telling that I know, I I mean I'll be telling the truth. Because the Bible didn't give me clarity on that. Mm. Do I make sense? So anybody mm. out there telling you knows, please <laughs> go back to your Bible. Say, because we don't know. We don't know which, we don't know the quarter that was spared. We don't know. We don't mm. know the quarter that was spared at all. So after the fourth trumpet, an angel, an angel, some manuscripts say, an eagle, some manuscripts translate that an eagle, uh, flies through the heaven announcing the three woes that we, we read. Woe, woe, woe of its inhabitants. That will come at the sounding of the fifth, sixth, and the seventh trumpets. Again, those three big woes are uh, so, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> something else is coming. <laughs> you know it's coming. <laughs> it's noise coming, something huge, yeah. something terrible. <laughs> something is something that is of no good. It's coming. And as, as I was reading, studying, and uh, going through these, there was one passage that um, this is why. I still, I strongly believe that true believers will be out of here because as 
verse 8 says, Then the angel took the sense of field, it with fire from the altar, and threw it into the air, and there were noises thundering, lightning, and the earthquake, thundering, thundering, noises. So there were a lot of noises. But what he can identify was he was thundering and lightning. Those he can see. Because if you see light, you can see light, you know. Earthquake, you can see the effect of earthquake. By the way, they were, say they were noises. But he only gave us three indications of what those noises were. Thundering, you can hear the effects of thunder. Brrr, you know. <laughs> and lightning, you can just... You know, but what other noises? We don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I like to I like to take a to think a little bit deep on some of these things. I have questions like you do, you know, but what the Bible did not give me, I try not to growing up as a student of the Bible, I tried to give an answer. Then I came to point I said, Oh no, Henry, no, no, you know, if you what Bible did not give an answer, didn't give it an answer. <laughs> don't put anything in there that is not in there, okay? You, you have every right to speculate. You have every right to extrapolate some of these things to uh, today's activities, history and all that. But you've got to be careful. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. you, you might sound deep, okay? You might sound, whoa, but is that true? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. is, that, is that what the Bible is saying? Sorry? I say, yes, it might sound deep, but you could be deeply wrong. Exactly. So, so speculation. Yeah. So again, just just speculate. Say, hey, this is my own speculation. This is how I see it. Why is it that throughout history? I mean, look at the end time. Well, you have to sit down and reflect. Look, the end time started the. We, we, we started hearing about the end time since the beginning of the New Testament. All the apostles talked about the end time. They thought it was eminent. <laughs> yes, when you read the New Testament, yes, they thought it was eminent. They thought it is now and it is right now. <laughs> and it has been over 2,000 years ago. Exactly. And so, yes, so you just have to think and pause and say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, <laughs> if you know your Bible, you know, end time started since Christ went to that cross and resurrected. That's right. That is why I, I, you hear me say that phrase over and over again. Mm -hmm. So the end time, the apostles have been preaching it. Trust me, even some scholars believe that even during Paul's time, Paul thought it was going to be right there and then. Maybe. Why he wrote? Yes, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. On mute, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you constantly bring that point up when you say end time started when Jesus went to the cross. Yep. Because when you say end time, people will think you meant like 20 years ago or 100 years ago, or even five no. years ago. But it started, <laughs> even me, I, I, I got to remember that. So I'm glad you bring that point up often. Yep. But you know yeah. what, Pastor, what, 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 what gets me is... I don't understand how you know they could think that when the okay. stuff in the Bible that's to come have it haven't begun yet, you know. So how can you believe that that's the end, you know? Or we in the end times? I should say we're not in the end times yet. No, end times is coming. It's a prelude to it. It's coming. Yeah. It's Again, the point is. But you have preachers going around preaching. We are in the end times right now. Yeah, when you be, we've been at end time since the beginning of the first century. That's the point I'm making. Since yes. Christ went to that cross. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. That was the beginning yes. of the end time for everyone. That was so the that, beginning. Exactly. So the end time is way back then. We are. So that is why it is good for all of us just to be prepared. That's mm -hmm. because we don't know. Uh huh. <laughs> because the, 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 the read Paul's epistles. The time is ready. And then even he told them, he said, well, those of you who, 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 who thinks the Lord's tariness is not, is for your good. It's so you can change. 
you know. So you that tells us that they've been preaching the end time way back then. Even the apostles themselves, like I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to repeat myself again. They thought, even during their time, the first century, they thought it was eminent. They thought it was going to be there during their time. Right. That's what they thought. Right. Huh. So they thought that just like they thought that when Jesus came, he was when Jesus came, he was getting ready to come and to rule and to reign. Exactly. It wasn't like that. <laughs> that wasn't they, that wasn't the time. They, they they miss the fact that he came for yeah. spiritual restoration, not yeah. physical restoration. Right. They miss that aspect. Huh. Right. He came, his first coming was spiritual restoration. This is why you and I, according to, I believe, Felish, uh, Ephesians chapter, uh, I think one verse three, somebody open that for me fast. Uh, I want to quote something from here. Is Ephesians 1, 3, just a minute here. Let me check something here. Um, let me see here, Ephesians 1, yes, 1, 3. I've not quoted this in a long time. So, uh, yes, it's a, Ephesians 1, 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Yeah. So we have, we are already, because we are being restored spiritually, we are already in Christ. We've been blessed with that spiritual blessing. So Amen. positionally, as we speak, we are righteous. We, because we are Christ, God's, the Father see us in Christ. So he see nothing but righteousness. He see nothing but pure individuals. Yeah, you and I might still see ourselves because we, we go through all this little nasty woo, thing mm -hmm. here, you know yeah. and then so you think no 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 once you are in christ god never see us like that anymore once you are in christ you are seated in high places with christ so positionally we are without any blemish right we are without any dent of no whatever you want to put it Okay, that, that's something to think about, man. You know, that's just just to know that. Yes, just make you happy inside. It just, yes, make you happy. Uh, yes, because you are man. in him. Philippians yes. one three. <laughs> you, you are sitting in a high place. You are blessed with spiritual blessings in Christ. What are some man. of those spiritual blessings? Righteousness, holiness, right yeah. standing with Christ. Yes. Having a place of holiness, mm -hmm. having a position of holiness, having a position of righteousness, having a position that is beyond condemnation. That's right. one aspect of that spiritual blessing. Not just not something that comes with it here is, but that is the core message of that. And so, that is what he came to do. So that so, brings me to, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Pastor. So for us, yes, are we in the end time? Yes, when... Those in the first century in Nero's time, when Nero was killing all the Christians, they were told us was even the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that was even worse. Can you yeah. imagine? Nero yeah. went out there. The speculation and 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 the the history and the story was because he was so zealous, set everything on fire and blaming on Christians because the right. Christians to be persecuted. Could you imagine the entire? Say, let's say Christians live in this block and the entire block is set ablaze. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Everybody would be thinking, wow, that is a tribulation. So, a lot of things even happen then. Even the Mark item, the Mark Can you imagine Christians being born on the stake? Yeah. If you ever watch during Obama's administration when one of the um, Taliban or whatever they were burned mm. their own, the, one of these Islams. Burn their own in a cage. You remember? Mm -hmm. We saw that. Yes. Yeah, burn, he was. They were yeah. trapped in there. Yes, burn. So burn. that is. Yes, that is how it was during the first century when you get martyrized. That is how it was. Only here, folks were burned on the stake and all that. That is how it was. Mm -hmm. So even in that time, folks would think, "Wow, there's an end time." So right. the end time is being preached since the beginning of Christ. Crucifixion, death, 
burial, resurrection, and ascension. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make that clear before. Wow, time. Oh, wow. I just want to pull out something. Wow. Nas, yeah, tell me about it, right? <laughs> um, okay, I'll bring this up uh, by the grace of God next Sunday. And I just want to leave it here when we're going to, I want to talk about one couple of passages that I, I even lean on when it was a related passage that tells you that this is even in the book of Isaiah and some other passages in the Old Testament was referring mm -hmm. to um, unbelief and ungodly folks were going through some stuff. So this here, uh, was now referring to um, those who have the privilege of the garment of God's righteousness. It's something mm -hmm. that I, I, I put in my own writing when you read my pamphlet, you know. Uh -huh. I, I, I said that those who have the privilege of the garment of God's righteousness, okay? Mm -hmm. These folks which... We are part and parcel of, we have, because we have that privilege, we can go into his presence anytime, any day, even in this physical realm. But in the spiritual realm, we are already positioned in Christ. So this, again, the third of the entire globe we're talking about here, the third of the entire globe, meaning just the one fourth that is left off. In which part of the one fourth is left? Again, we are not given. Is it the West? Is it the East? Is it South? Is it North? We are not giving it here. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We can bring in everything. We can look at everything. So oh, the folks from here, really? <laughs> the folks from the East, really? <laughs> is that what it says? <laughs> Folks from Africa, really? <laughs> but Pastor, you know what I was thinking? That if they did know, <laughs> if they did know, uh, they'd they be like, oh, okay, I think we better go over there and live, live because they're gonna God going to destroy this and I don't want to be, a, I'm going to go over there. In other words, they think they're going to outsmart God. You, know? you, brought, you brought up a very excellent point. <laughs> you see, this is some of the things why God didn't even give us which the, the third, the, the quarter that is left will be known to anybody. Because, mm -hmm. you know, so again, it hints on preparation. Mm -hmm. Always remember the 10 versions. Right. Always remember the 10 versions. Mm -hmm. That's a very good mm -hmm. uh, 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 takeaway for every Christian. Always, all the 10 have a knowledge of, his, of the bride's coming, bridegroom's coming. No, the, 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 yeah, the bridegroom's coming. All of, all of ten of them have knowledge. They know he's coming. Right. They all know. They but there was knowledge. only five who were really ready. Was ready. Meaning that the moment he showed up, boom, <laughs> they gone. Yeah. All ten. So that is all of us. Okay. That ten could be the world. Then believers, the five. I'll put it this way. The Bible didn't say like that. I'm speculating. Right. The ten will be those, the five will be those who truly embrace the cross, who truly believe that Christ died for their sins. So mm -hmm. they are ready. Mm -hmm. Those five are those of us who, whenever we go through our tribulations here, we go through our, our, our rough times, we're still, we're still there, you know? So we are ready because, but all of us have the knowledge. Because the knowledge of the gospel is universal. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're you are living in a village somewhere in my country, mm -hmm. in Africa, or whether you are somewhere that you haven't seen even electricity before. Just have that knowledge is universal because you have conscience. <laughs> okay. And I God was, speaks. Mm -hmm. I was just telling a young man that, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Uh, I picked him up and everything, and he was talking, you know, and I asked him a question. I say, you know, if Jesus was to return right now, I say, would you be ready? You know, 
And he went to giving me all his little elaborate thoughts and all of this kind of stuff. I said, yeah, but would you be ready? Yeah, I said, how would you know you're ready? He say, uh, cause I gave the Lord my life and everything. But yet, you know, he living like the devil. He cuss, he has all, everything in his hands, weed, you name it. But he has a knowledge of God, you know, but he doesn't know God. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there's so many people in the church professing that they know God. But the question is, does God know you? Do you have a relationship with him? He said, man, I don't need all that. <laughs> I don't need all that. I'm like, oh, but you do. I said, but you do. I said, because the devil comes too as a real light and he'll, he'll pretend to be God. Uh, he'll make you think you know God and you really don't know him, you yeah. know? Yeah. So he didn't want to he didn't want to hear the rest of it. And he said, "Ah, good, my stop," and jumped out the car, and ran. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's, uh... But that goes to show a lot of people say they know God but don't know God, and then there are those that know the Lord and know what He says, knows what His Word says, and intellectually they know of Him but they don't know Him because they don't have a relationship with Him. Uh, uh, but one thing to believers should be cautious about is that, huh? This must come to everybody else. Look, um, God knows who know him in a yeah. way. You and I, we, we have, we can measure by the scriptures, you know. Yeah. Uh, you and I, because we know God, we want to live by uh, whatever it is, by, by his grace. You know, the grace has mm -hmm. given us the ability to live right. according to how he wants, he wants us to live. So that is why days that our day did not go well with yeah. the scriptures we try to just the grace but there are other folks always remember there are i put it this way there are two count two kinds of christians okay the common christian is a christian but it's a carnal man mm -hmm. okay that's not mean he's not a christian okay there's a count there's a kind of because i always look at the book of corinthians where paul says let's get rid of him so his spirit will be saved, okay? Right. That means that person is saved. That's like he's walking carnally. He's not walking according to the spirit. So let us be careful sometimes how we um, see folks and, you know, and, and, and give the gospel. Let us be extremely careful uh, mm -hmm. because some folks are truly believers, but they just that they are walking carnally. So the, ask, how do we deal with those folks is those are the kind that probably will do our best to bring to the fore. Maybe they, they, they know Christ, but they don't have what it takes to, to grow. You see what I'm saying? To come yeah. to a level where mm -hmm. they know that, oh, I'm not supposed, I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing what I'm doing now, you know, because mm -hmm. that is that is that is not even good for me, you know. So I guess I was like that, you know, but as you begin to mature. You begin to see things a little bit different, you know. Say, because mm, for the Bible says, anybody that knows Christ will not call Christ accursed. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Huh? In mm -hmm. other words, do we have a lot of brothers out here that truly know Christ but still smoking? We, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> yes. Do we have brothers and sisters out here that truly know Christ but still have. Practicing prostitution? Yes, trust me. I have one in my car last time, and, and, and all of a sudden, oh Lord, and you know she know the Lord. I just, I know it. I know it. The way she's, I know it. <laughs> but her lifestyle won't tell you. But I know it. I, the way she said it, because she was scared. She didn't just mention the name like how folks. You, do you know that there are folks who just mention the name Jesus because? They, they hear somebody mention it, but there are those who mention, you know, uh oh, oh, you know, the Lord is just that he was just, he or she just, yeah, and she was a prostitute. So mm -hmm. let us, I believe these are folks that we need to bring. This is why teaching, these are folks who need to come mm -hmm. and be knowledgeable of how, what it takes to walk the true mm -hmm. work of Christ. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, we got to be. Extremely careful. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Uh, you know, like 
you know, God looks at the heart. See, we got we to gotta remember, we can't get so caught up on outer appearances. We, you know, I think about my daughter, Shante, she, she has a tattoo and she got it many, many, many years ago. So she look at it now, she said, oh, I, I regret getting this tattoo. You know, so <laughs> well, I, I, really, I really think about, it. like you said, a prostitute, a, 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 a bum mm -hmm. on the street. You know, we, we can't get caught up on, you know, the way people are dressed. You know, I think about a couple of times me and my husband will watch different concerts. And you know it'll be it'll be a, like a Mike I'm gonna say Mike a Michael Smith concert or Elevation mm -hmm. Worship mm -hmm. concert, and they might mm -hmm. be dressed in a T-shirt. Some of them got tattoos on, different things like that. And you know, to some you know some people they be like, oh, they can't be, you know, they this and that. But then you 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 look at some churches where they fully dressed, yep. three piece suits, big hats. That doesn't, mean they know, that doesn't mean they know Christ. So mm -hmm. you can't all you can't judge. You can't look at outer. God looks at the heart. At the heart. So we, we all have to be careful yeah. of that. Extremely careful. All right. But now one thing I want to bring out of this is this. Okay, so then when it talks about the ten virgins and the five wise and the five foolish, mm -hmm. uh, the five that was foolish, they were Christians, right? They considered Christians, right? But they wasn't ready, so they got left behind. No, they, they were not really ready. Um, I don't think they were real Christians. It's the world. It's just like, just like, um, the, just like the, um, um, the world today. Um, it isn't everybody that say, Lord, Lord, yeah. right? you know, knows the Lord. Right. So they thought, they thought, so they know about, they know about, about it, you know, they thought they, but, they were not ready because they, they were not Christians. Let me put it like that. Real Christians are ready. It doesn't matter whether, trust me, there are a lot of folks out here that when you run into them, when you look at their outward appearance, mm -hmm. and the person if you say, you say, oh, wow. But then in their heart, <laughs> okay, just that sometimes there is this struggle. Again, this is why you and I have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. These are folks that are lacking teaching. And again, I don't think that those were, who are the Christians who are ready and those who are not ready? This is how we, we have to ask ourselves. Who are true Christians who are ready and who are Christians who are not ready? If you're a Christian once, you can always be a Christian. Does right. that make sense? Right. You, uh, you, 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 you can be walking carnally meaning you don't allow the power. You can't walk in the fullness of the power. That is, you are doing yourself. <laughs> Let me put it like that, okay? Right. If, if you're a Christian, you are walking carnally. Well, you are doing yourself the service because you can't walk in the fullness of the power, okay? <laughs> Say maybe you're doing something that you need to call on the Holy Ghost to defend you. You, you can't do it because you don't even have the confidence in you to do that. So you're doing disservice to yourself. <laughs> disservice to yourself. If you come clean to him and repent, you know, it's different. But so I we can we can have that debate or discussion next time. We're gonna probably we're gonna look a little bit into it. I'm pretty uh probably not too much to finish with because now as I'm just looking at the text of the revelation, we're gonna mm -hmm. finish that before we're gonna probably go to other aspects that we're doing and other teaching. We're gonna look into that uh, one time. I wanna end this here so we can stop the recording. So it's not, I thought we can just get it down to just 30 minutes so, so others can enjoy. But all these discussions, we're gonna look at what you brought up. We're gonna probably discuss that. Uh, we're gonna have that discussion. Okay, are the 10 virgins are they are they are they all Christians or are they all believers in the Lord? If so, how did they? So we can we can look at that. Make sense? We can we can look into that. Yeah, that's we can look into that. Yeah, good old good old research. Yeah, we're gonna look into yeah. that. We're gonna look into that and see uh, uh, how did they miss out? Because I, <laughs> the way I believe is, if you are a Christian, it doesn't matter how far you you stray. You still right. gonna be a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you, 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 you can't swear that unless you're not a Christian. You also have to remember in the book of Acts. You remember? 
the guy who claimed to be a Christian, and then he was not truly a Christian. And then when he saw the gift of, when he saw how Peter was healing, he said, whoa, can I give you money so you can give me some of that power? <laughs> no, he wasn't a Christian. So this no, had a kind of exactly. So the, if you look at the at 10 virgins, we have to look at the, the five foolish ones like mm. that. Who, who does the Bible call in the foolish in, in the scripture? Unbelievers. Exactly. The world. Exactly. Mm. So they, 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 they're not really believers. <laughs> they are mm. foolish. They thought they are, but they're not. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so we're going to go into that. You know, So these are how we, we really look at the scriptures. Who do the Bible call foolish in the scriptures? How did the Bible describe foolishness in the scriptures? Which kind of people fit that criteria? We're going to look into that. We're going to probably measure that by the 10 foolish virgins. They were mm -hmm. virgins. Okay. Mm -hmm. So meaning they are humans. So we're going to look, we're going to probably do a thorough study on that on ourselves and have a discussion because this, mm -hmm. is, this is how this is how it helps everybody else, you know, to see. <laughs> yeah, this is how it helps. So um, we want to give the, um, the Doxology here before everybody have to enjoy doxology. And if there is any further discussion, we 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 we've stopped the recording before that. Uh now that we have brought uh those of you watching us on face, I mean YouTube, we used to be on Facebook a lot, that's why on YouTube. Um we have uh again look into uh just not every aspect of the book of Revelation chapter eight, but we look at the main aspect of it today. We're gonna to go into uh, chapter nine uh, next Sunday. I'll do a little bit, elaborate a little bit on what we saw in chapter seven. That's gonna lead, I mean, chapter eight, that's gonna lead us into chapter nine. And so today we, uh, this moment, even during the studies, you can hear me and my group, we had a very good discussion about everything else. So uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, give us the uh, the doxology, and then uh, we, we're gonna end it here. Heavenly Father, we wanna thank you this moment. I commit all this into your hands today. They are going in and coming out. They are blessed in the city, blessed on the field. Lord. So ever they touch, turn into gold. Father, may your blessings be upon them. Those who know you, increase their faith in you. Give them the ability, Father, to go to, to, go to different heights in you, a new dimension in you. That, that dimension, Lord, which make them want to live for you 24-7, a dimension where they realize and recognize uh, their, uh, their position in you as righteousness, as right-standing individuals who have no blemish at all. And may you get them into that dimension where uh, they want to just live for you. Father, may your peace pursue and overtake them. May sickness be far away from them. May disease leave their territory, leave their address, leave anywhere close to them. May divine health, prosperity, and ultimate work with you be their portion. I give you glory today, even as the, the, the word of God says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord keep his face shine upon you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, I thank you. I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.